What's going on there, YouTube? And welcome back to another comic book video. This is the channel where we sit down and cover different comic book stories from different comic book companies. Today, we're going to jump back over to Marvel Comics, and we are going to begin our coverage over Jonathan Hickman's New Avengers and Avengers series. The reason why, because you guys have been begging me to cover this for a long time, and we are finally here. We are going to cover everything we can, including Secret Wars, because you guys have been wanting this. So here we are. Today's video will be New Avengers number one, number two, and number three. That is it. And this is the beginning of one of the best events in comic book history of all time. So, if you do enjoy today's comic book video, please hit that like button down below and subscribe. But here we go. In the opening of this book, we pick up with the reminder that there is a group of heroes who thought they have the right to make all of the choices for the entire world. This group is called the Cabal. And in this group was Mr. Fantastic, Iron Man, Charles Xavier, Namor, Black Bolt. And they were asking Black Panther to join, but he says no because he predicts they will lead the human race to a downfall and leaves. The next page we pick up with Mr. Fantastic talking to someone about how everything is dying. This is the present day, by the way. But this is him saying that not just this universe, except everything in the multiverse is dying. And honestly, he wants to save this one. So we have to jump back 26 hours ago and we pick up in Wakanda, of course, the home of Black Panther, except we see some teens who are currently doing some kind of trial in Wakanda, which all of them do pass. And you have Black Panther talking about how Wakanda has the best space center on Earth now, meaning that their goal is to continue to keep that up and also start trying to travel into space. Except that is when one of the teens who is there feels some kind of seismic waves. And that is when a rhino runs by. So that makes the teens in Black Panther want to figure out what scared it, but also that it seems like it came through some kind of portal. Of course, they go inside the portal. And that is when they see an Earth coming towards their Earth which is giving us our first look at the incursions in Marvel Comics. At the same time, we see that there are some people coming down from that second Earth, and we get our first look at the Black Swan. We will learn more about this person soon, but for now, she came from that Earth. They then pull out some kind of device that does grab the attention of the teens. So that makes one of them come out of hiding and says hi. Now the reason why he did that is also because they began speaking, but it wasn't English. It was an old language. Of course, Black Panther knows and says they are speaking Sumerian. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Then Black Swan begins talking in English and she asks Black Panther if he would stop her if she tried to kill a world. Of course, the man says yes. But she then tells her men to attack Black Panther and the teens. Black Panther was able to put a shield up to save his life, but two of the teens are now dead. This does give us a set of pages where we have Black Panther in the last team trying to stay alive. Sally Doe, of course, after a few panels, we do see that the last team does die. So now it is time for the Black Panther to stop the Black Swan and also stop all of her men because now we know that she is going to blow up the second Earth that is in the sky. At the same time, Black Swan talks to some scientist who has a device that he made for her. It seems like he is having second thoughts about using this device, but Black Swan does not. So the last few pages, we see Black Swan kill the scientist, but now she has the device in her hands. She of course is happy to do this, but seems like she feels like she is doing this for the greater good. Now, when Black Panther punches her, he is already too late. She already pressed the button. And of course, that does begin the process of blowing up the planet. Black Panther does look up into the sky and sees that the second Earth that was about to crash into the main Marvel Universe Earth is gone. And the sky is no longer red. Of course, 
this freaks them out. So with that happening, of course, this means that Black Panther is going to call up the people he lectured not so long ago. Of course, he is talking about calling in the Illuminati to help him and tell them what he had just witnessed. Another Earth almost crashed into the main Marvel's Earth. That a random lady known as the Black Swan had arrived and she blew up that Earth. So of course, Captain America, Doctor Strange, Mr. Fantastic, Namor, and Iron Man have arrived to discuss this. The only person who is missing, of course, is Charles Xavier, and I will explain why later on. Now, before we are able to explore the conversation those heroes are about to have, we have Reed Richards going to talk to Black Swan. The reason why is because Black Swan was able to destroy the planet. He and the Cabal want to know why she did that. Why was the other Earth about to crash land on the main Marvel's Earth for? She tells him that he has no idea what is coming, and what is coming is going to break him and the rest of the Illuminati. A couple hours later, we see Black Panther meet up with Namor in one of the waiting rooms. At this point, the two characters are at odds with one another. The reason why is because back in Avengers vs. X-Men, Namor was one of the five people to get the Phoenix Force. Namor then proceeds to flood Wakanda. So right now, it is Black Panther saying they have to work together for now, except once business is done, T'Challa is going to kill Namor. So we jump to the present moment where we see Reed Richards telling everyone that everything is going to die. Now something else to point out is that all of the heroes are surprised that Black Panther had called them here. Remember, in the beginning of this video, he had basically dissed the team. Except now he says that since the whole world is in danger, that means his people, he has no choice but to help out. Now, Namor then says they need to confirm that everyone here is who they say they are since in the past, the group has been compromised. Now, the way they are supposed to confirm who is who is with their Infinity Stones. Except Namor, Doctor Strange, Captain America, and Mr. Fantastic are the only ones who brought their stones. The rest of the group hid their stones somewhere safe so no one could get them. After a few panels, you have everyone being able to confirm who they are. You did have Reed Richards explain to us and the rest of the heroes that the multiverse is dying. With each universe, there is a beginning and an end. Each universe has a timeline, except each of these universes are stacked next to each other, but they all hold up the multiverse structure. So with each universe's death, it speeds up the death of the multiverse. In one of these universes, something happened and sped up the process of the death of the multiverse. So now you have these universes smashing into one another. If two universes Earth crash into each other, they both go away. So that is Black Swan destroying that Earth earlier to save this one. You didn't have Reed Richards explain the rules. He goes on to say that when two Earths are about to collide with each other, it is called an incursion. They have eight hours before the end of these incursions. The only way to beat it is to of course destroy one of these planets. Now everyone on this team is kind of already agreeing to kill a planet to save theirs, except for one person, Captain America. He is full of hope that they have a way to save both planets. He then says that they should use the Infinity Stones to stop the next incursion. If one does pop up, it is a better option to use that rather than blowing up the entire Earth. There is one problem though. One member of the original Illuminati was Charles Xavier, and he is dead now. He died back in Avengers vs. X-Men thanks to Cyclops. He had the Mind Stone, and no one knows where that stone is at. So of course, they have to go out and find where that stone is at. We then get a couple pages that show us what to come down the road, which of course, there are going to be a lot of different things, not just in the new Avengers books, 
but also in the main Avengers books as well. There are some other books as well, but those are the main two books. But at the end of the second chapter, we see that there was a private meeting between Black Panther and Reed Richards, where the two of them basically already know that they need to build something that can destroy a world. So this moment is planting the seeds that the other heroes besides Captain America have already decided they are going to blow up another Earth. The main reason why is because Reed Richards remembers what Black Swan said. Whatever is coming is going to break Reed Richards and all of the heroes. But getting into New Avengers number three, we actually pick up in New York. But we pick up with the X-Men, well, one X-Men member, and that member, of course, is Beast. This is the moment where Beast actually joins the Illuminati. The reason why is because Charles Xavier always had a backup plan just in case something happened to him. And so Charles Xavier planted a memory in the Beast's mind just in case he died that Beast would take his place in the Illuminati. And so when Beast gets a mail that was sent from Charles Xavier a long time ago and he opens it, all it says was remember. And that one small message was able to unlock a past memory in the mind of Beast where he is able to remember a conversation between him and Charles Xavier. And then you have Beast go over to a safe, puts a code in, and in that safe was the Mind Stone. And you have the rest of the Illuminati appear in front of Beast to tell him that he has now joined the Illuminati. Then we jump one day later where you have the Illuminati putting an implant in the hand of Beast. The reason why is because with Beast joining the team now, they need a way to communicate with him. And so with this implant, he'll be able to communicate with one another. Now, this is also the moment where you have the Illuminati reveal that they have built a device that will warn them when an incursion is about to happen. And so of course, they're getting ready to do anything they can to stop an incursion. And so this shows us Illuminati is getting one step closer to trying to figure out how to save the universe. But then we pick up with Mr. Fantastic, AKA Reed Richards talking to the Black Swan. Again, we do not know much about her, but you have the two of them talking to each other because right now they're holding the Black Swan as a prisoner. But you have Black Swan asking Reed, what is their plan to stop the next incursion? And that is the moment you have Reed tell her they are going to use the Infinity Stones as a way to push the Earth away from their Earth, or to help them end the incursion. You then have Black Swan tell Reed that his plan is dumb, that the gems only work in their universe, meaning that they cannot work in a different universe they do not belong to. And so it's Black Swan telling him, listen, your plan is not going to work. All it's going to do is buy you some time. But either way, you, sooner or later, are going to have to listen to me and actually destroy that Earth. But then we come to the big moment as we see days gone by, one day, two days, three days, four, and that is when the next incursion is about to begin and you have the Illuminati all come together because they need to stop the next incursion. And so this is the moment where you have our heroes realize they are going to mess up. They are going to fail. The only way to save the earth is to listen to Black Swan. But either way, when you have all our heroes arrive they see another Earth about to crash into their Earth, realizing if they cannot stop this Earth from crashing to their Earth, then it's all over. And so you have the heroes take out all six Infinity Stones, the Infinity Gauntlet, and they get ready to use it as a way to push the Earth away from theirs. But with them bringing all these gems together, we see other characters realizing that the stones are all together once again. These are very powerful characters like Galactus, Thanos, and the Watcher. They all realize the stones are about to be used 
for something big. Now, of course, the one person who is going to use the stones as a way to push the other Earth away from the main Marvel Universe Earth is Captain America. He puts on the gauntlet. He raises his hand up to the sky and hoping that he be the one to actually save their Earth from this incursion. And so they use the stone. He uses it. He pushes it back. But this is one of the biggest moments ever to happen in Marvel Comics because like Black Swan said, the plan would not work. The stones are not going to save the main Marvel Universe from this incursion at all. And so that is the moment where we see every single stone except the time stone breaks. The mind stone, reality stone, power stone, the space stone, the soul stone, they all just shatter. The time gem disappears. But either way, this is the moment the heroes realize that Black Swan was correct. Their plan was not going to work. But then after a couple hours later, you have all the heroes come together to talk one more time about what they should do to save their Earth and the other Earth that could crash into their Earth. Except this is the moment where you have Steve Rogers, aka Captain America, realize that he is on his own because the rest of the heroes have already decided that they are going to blow up another earth if they have to. Steve Rogers disagrees with that plan. He still believes the heroes can find a way to save both earths if it comes down to it. But of course, the rest of the heroes realize that Black Swan is correct. There is no other way to stop an incursion except blowing up another earth. And so you have Iron Man tell Steve, uh, sorry, you have Iron Man tell Doctor Strange. I almost said Iron Man tell Steve Rogers. You have Iron Man tell Doctor Strange to make Steve Rogers forget everything about the incursions, about the Illuminati, about even being part of the Illuminati. The only thing he'll remember is everything else as his time as Captain America. And this is where we In the opening pages of Jonathan Hickman's Avengers number one, we actually pick up how the universe was created. He says, there was nothing followed by everything, swirling, burning specks of creation that circled life giving suns. And then we race to the light. That was just the beginning of how the universe was made. But then he moves on to show us what is to come down the road. Hyperion, Ex Nihilo, and also the Great War. A lot of things are going to happen down the road. And this is just Jonathan Hickman giving us literally a preview. Now we actually jump over to Tony Stark and Steve Rogers. And the reason why is because Tony Stark is working on something. Something big. And really it was built off the idea that Steve Rogers has. And so when Tony goes over to see Steve Rogers, Steve Rogers just had a nightmare. Of course, that nightmare he had is when the Illuminati had basically erased his mind. That all took place in our new Avengers video we did last week. But either way, he's remembering small glimpse of that moment, but not the full thing. But either way, you have Tony Stark trying to keep Steve Rogers busy by saying, listen, do you remember what you told me? And Steve Rogers says, yes, that how the world is constantly changing. The world is getting more danger, dangerous, sorry, day by day. And sooner or later, they're going to need more help down the road to deal with these different problems. And so it's Steve Rogers and Tony Stark saying, we need to expand the Avengers. We need to make it bigger. Now we do jump over to Mars where we learn it has been one month since Tony Stark and Steve Rogers came together to begin the process of working on that project to expand the Avengers. But we jump over to Mars and we pick up with three characters, Ex Nihilo, Aleph, and Abyss. Now Ex Nihilo is the guy all in gold. 
Aleph is the robot guy, and Abyss is the girl wearing all black. Now, the reason why we pick up with these three characters is because Ex Nihilo has been changing Mars into an actual good planet. It was a dead planet, and he's now bringing life to that planet. But then his next goal was to speed up the process of the evolution of humans on Earth. And so he has been sending bombs down to Earth to speed up their process of evolving. Now, when it comes to Aleph, he tells Ex Nihilo what he is doing is wrong. And he says that world should be destroyed. I will explain why later on. But then you have Abyss actually agree with Aleph, saying that she has been studying humans for a while now. Humans have made weapons, and those weapons had led them to kill each other. And so that makes the Earth even more dangerous. But before they are able to talk more about this topic, that is when you have Aleph say they have trouble coming. And that trouble is actually the main Avengers, the main six Avengers. Captain America, Iron Man, Thor, Hulk, Hawkeye, and Black Widow all coming together to go to Mars to fight against Ex Nihilo, Aleph, and Abyss. Now, let me tell y'all something real quick. Let me tell y'all this. This is one of the quickest and the worst beatdowns I have seen in Avengers books in a long time. Because as soon as the Avengers arrive and they try to fight against these three guys on Mars, they get their butts handed to them. Also, it doesn't help that Abyss was actually able to mind control the Hulk and use the Hulk to fight against Thor. And so there goes the two most powerful characters on this Avengers team. And you have Ex Nihilo just take out Iron Man, Hawkeye, and Black Widow. At the same time, you have Aleph just beat down on Captain America. And so the Avengers are quickly beaten down in a matter of like three or four pages. But then you have Ex Nihilo actually pick up Steve Rogers, put him in a spaceship, and send him right back down to Earth. And the reason why is because he wants Steve Rogers to be a message to the rest of the humans on Earth to say, listen, you sent your best or what you believe was your best to come up here and actually stop me but they failed. I was able to actually defeat your Avengers very quickly. And so this is your only warning. Let me do my work. Let me change the earth to make it better than it already was. Now, as soon as Steve Rogers crashes on earth, he begins to have flashbacks. These flashbacks are just what happened at the beginning of our video. Him and Tony Stark, talking to one another about starting up the idea of expanding the Avengers, make them bigger, make Avengers world. And that is the moment where you actually have Steve Rogers go to that same computer, turn it on, and he says, assemble. And that is when we see every single person that Tony Stark and Steve Rogers had thought will be a good idea to be on the Avengers, to make the Avenger team bigger. And now they're all coming together to go fight against Ex Nihilo on Mars. And when we jump into Avengers number two, we actually pick up back on Mars once again with Ex Nihilo, Aleph, and Abyss. And the reason why, because you have all three of them be surprised about Thor. And the reason why, because Thor is a god, god of thunder. He's not your basic human being on Earth. And so they find him very interesting, but then this is the moment where you actually have Ex Nihilo explain the history of Ex Nihilo, Aleph, and Abyss to us. Ex Nihilo says that in the beginning of time, you only had one race, which was the Builders. They were the first race, and they believed in Miss Universe, this God they were praying. Now, after a while, they began to realize that they should control space and time, and so they made the Alice program, a bunch of robots just like Alice. Now these Alice went across the universe and they had two goals, which is when they find a planet, if that planet did not deserve to be evolved, it got erased, meaning that the whole race on that planet they went to got destroyed. 
but when they got to a planet and they found a race that actually deserves to be evolved, then the Alice would give out two eggs. One egg would be a Nihilo and the other one would be an Abyss. And so that is how Ex Nihilo and Abyss were able to change Mars because their Aleph felt like Mars was a great spot to be evolved. And of course, that is when you had Ex Nihilo and Abyss begin the change on Mars. But here comes the big thing. Earth was supposed to be erased. Ex Nihilo was the one who told his Aleph, no, I feel like I can change Earth. I feel like Earth does deserve to be evolved and actually get better. We then jump back in time with Captain America and also Tony Stark. Now these two characters are still working on the Avengers World program. And back then they were kind of wondering who should be on the main team. They know they should be on the main team, but also Thor, the big three, Thor, Iron Man, and Captain America. But after that, who can also be on the main Avengers team? Yes, you got Black Widow. Yes, you have Hawkeye, but who can take up the last spot? Now, Tony Stark wanted Hulk. Steve Rogers has some concerns with the Hulk, which he does have the right to concern with the Hulk. But we now know the Hulk did take up that last spot. And so that is your main Avengers team. But after that, who else can be on the reserve list? Who can be on there to help out the Avengers when they need help? And for Tony Stark and Steve Rogers, they want to make sure when the time comes, can those heroes actually answer the call? And I mean, we know they all came because we saw in the last issue when Steve Rogers said, assemble, they all came. But with this book right here, we actually get to see them go around recruiting different characters. And these characters are going to play a very important roles for later stories down the road. I mean, the first few don't seem like that, like Spider-Man, Falcon. But later on, we do see other characters like Carol Danvers, Spider-Woman. Some characters we have not seen on the Avengers, like Hotspot and Cannonball, because usually they only stay on the X-Men roster. But this is the Avengers trying to expand their roster, get bigger, get better. Now, there are some new characters I need to go over, but I will as we go through this video and other videos down the road. But again, this is Steve Rogers bringing the Avengers together to hopefully stop Ex Nihilo and Abyss on Mars and save the rest of the Avengers who are still being held hostage on Mars. Now we do jump back over to Mars, where you have Tony Stark asking Ex Nihilo why he is doing this. Now we know why, because Ex Nihilo believes that he's actually able to make the Earth better. That is why he's been sending bombs down there, these viruses, as a way to revamp the human DNAs. But of course, he is killing people, but to him, that has to happen. He has to see which people could survive his virus because he's trying to make the earth better, to revamp the human's DNA. Now, he even says that he has been creating his own Adam. Of course, that is a reference to Adam and Eve. But once the earth has been revamped and made better, he's going to give that earth over to his Adam because he believed that his Adam can lead the new race that he is creating on earth in the right direction. Now we actually do jump back over to Earth and the reason why because we pick up with Steve Rogers and his Avengers on Earth because they are getting ready to go back to Mars to fight against Ex Nihilo, Abyss, and Aleph. Now the way they're going to get there is going to be different because they're going to use a mutant known as Manifold aka Eden Fessy. Now he first appeared I want to say back in the Secret Warriors book. I could be wrong. But he has the ability to bend space and time around him to make portals so that he is actually able to teleport people to anywhere he wants to go. Now, you would think Mars would be a very difficult thing for him to do. But the reason why is not because he can actually communicate with the universe itself. And that is very huge. And so for him, going to Mars is a piece of cake. He tells Wolverine, Oh, you go to Mars? Cool, I got y'all. 
Give me like one second. I'll build a portal and we can all go there to fight against the bad guys. Now, when we get into Avengers number three, it is the book where you actually have the birth of the Adam. Remember, this Adam is supposed to be the perfect human that Ex Nihilo made to lead his new human race in the right direction on Earth. But while this Adam is coming out of his cocoon, we actually jump over to Abyss trying to make Thor join her side. And she does try her best because she does kiss him hoping that would work. But while she did that, of course, that is when the Adam comes out of his cocoon and begins to speak a language that only a select few people should know. And of course, it catches everyone off guard. Abyss is confused on why this Adam knows that language. And you have Ex Nihilo say, because I gave it to him. Now this language is the language of the builders. And again, that is something only the builders should have Maybe Ex Nihilo and Abyss, but that is it. Now this perfect human has this language. And the question is, why did Ex Nihilo do this for? He said he has a good reason to do the unexpected. But again, he has to have a reason. But of course, before he is actually able to tell us that reason, well, he is blasted right in the chest. And the reason why, because the Avengers are on Earth now and they're here to save the other Avengers team and get them back to Earth. Now this fight is actually pretty cool because you do have Steve Rogers appear with a small team of the Avengers that he was able to gather. And while they're fighting against Ex Nihilo and Abyss, well then you have Tony Stark wondering, hey, Avengers World was supposed to be a whole lot bigger than this team you have right now. And that is when you have Manifold able to bring in even more members of the Avengers. And so now the Avengers has a huge roster of people all here to fight against just three characters, which means the Avengers should win this battle very easily. Now this leads us into the big moment of the book, which is the Captain Universe moment. And the reason why, because when it comes to Captain Universe, there has been so many over the years in Marvel Comics. And I wanna go over the origin of how each person is selected to be the next Captain Universe. It all starts with the Enigma Force. So the Enigma Force was a god of light that was made 14 billion years ago. It was brought into life by the Celestials. Now the thing was, it was made as a way to fight against the dark god, Noel. Of course, we saw that in the Venom comics. Now here's the thing. It realized that it's the most powerful when it's bonded to just one person rather than multiple different hosts. And so every sooner or later, when the universe is in danger, it will bond to a singular host. Now that host could sometimes forget what is going on when it's bonded with the Captain Universe powers. And so right now, our latest person is a girl named Tamara DeVolks. I hope I pronounced that name correctly. And so you have to remember, when it comes to the builders, the ones that created Ex Nihilo, Abyss, and Aleph, they used to believe in the universe as a god. But then they moved away from that and began the process of trying to control space and time. But here's the thing though, now this god is right in front of their children. And so Ex Nihilo and Abyss are kind of like, oh my god, our god is here. Now for Aleph, he does not believe that this is their god. Because one, he is a robot. He is able to detect the human race. But he does not realize, number two, that the Enigma Force is that god he used to pray, or his creators used to pray. And so he has no idea that, yes, there is a human host in there right now, but his god is right there in front of him. And so he actually tries to fight against Captain Universe. And literally, this man tries everything he has to blast her away. But you have Captain Universe just bam. One single blast, gone, just like that. And then she looks at Ex Nihilo in the abyss and says, you will stop what you're doing, which is going around and trying to change all these planets because you have broken the system of the universe. Stop that. 
You guys were not made to do that at all. I mean, you were made, but your builders had no right to make you to do that. And so she's telling them, as your God, I just gave you command to stop doing what you have been doing. Now, after that, you actually have Ex Nihilo asking Steve Rogers, why is Earth so important to him? What made Earth so special? And you have Steve Rogers tell Ex Nihilo because it is an Avengers world. And then we see Tony Stark and Steve Rogers excited in what they made because they were able to bring in so many different people to expand the Avengers as a way to protect the Earth because we know a lot of things are about to go down in this run by Jonathan Hickman. But either way, this is where... So getting into Avengers number four, we actually pick up with the Avengers right now, looking over the damage that was done across the earth by Ex Nihilo. Now remember, Ex Nihilo was this character that was made by the builders as a way to send him across the universe to create life in their own image. Now Ex Nihilo actually came to Mars first in this galaxy and he brought life to Mars. But after doing that, he felt like he'd be able to actually make mankind on Earth better. And so he sent down different kinds of genetic bombs as a way to rewrite the human DNA to make them better. Now for Black Widow, she says they were able to count for all the bombs they know of, but there could have been a sixth bomb that was sent down by Ex Nihilo and we have no idea where that bomb had crash landed at. Now, this is the moment where you actually have Hyperion say, actually, I do know where that bomb had crashed at. Thanks to him looking over the footage, he was able to tell that the bomb landed in the Savage Land. And so right now, the Avengers must go to the Savage Land to see how Ex Nihilo's genetic bomb had kind of affected the Savage Land. So this is the moment where we actually learn about the origin of Hyperion. And we learn that Hyperion actually comes from a different universe. Now Hyperion is actually Marvel's version of DC. And the reason why I say that is because in his universe, his home world was wiped out. And of course that means he is the last survivor of that home world. But in his universe, he was sent to that universe version of Earth. And once he got there, he was adopted by a random man. Now, this random man actually taught him so many different things, but especially how society should work. But then, of course, he became a superhero on that, on that Earth. Now, with him becoming a hero on that Earth, of course, he has the same powers as Superman. But then on top of that, his powers come from the same source of energy, just like Superman, the sun. And so that is why he is Marvel's version of Superman. But now the question is, how in the world did this man end up in our universe, the main Marvel's universe? Now, we actually do jump over to the Avengers right now, and we see the Avengers going to the Savage Land. And the reason why they're going to the Savage Land is to see how life was affected by Ex Nihilo's genetic bomb. Now, when they get there, of course, they do see that many people or animals are right now trapped inside these cocoons and they're getting their DNA rewritten thanks to Ex Nihilo's genetic bombs. But on top of that, you do have Thor trying to be a friend to Hyperion. And honestly, Hyperion's main goal is to make sure that everyone here in the Savage Land is okay. But either way, you do have Hyperion realize there's other people in the Savage Land as well near them. And so that is when he uses his supervision to see that AIM 
one of the many evil organizations in Marvel Comics, is also in the Savage Land, and they're known as Advanced Idea Mechanics. Of course, that means they love science, and right now, they're doing science in this area of the Savage Land. Now, we do learn why AIM is here for. They want to see firsthand what happens to someone when they are affected by the genetic bomb. And so what they did was they were able to grab a sample of the bomb to give to someone to see firsthand what happens. Now, here comes the big thing though. They were able to convince a random guy to actually follow them to the Savage Land. This guy thought that he was going to join AIM and actually be a part of that group to make them better. But unfortunately, he was just a test subject. But either way though, they do give him the sample. And when they do, of course, he goes through different effects. So many different effects happen to him. But at the end of it, he officially dies. And so for AIM, they're kind of like, well, we had no idea that would happen to him. But of course, once they're done with their little project, that is when the Avengers actually find them. So this is the moment where we actually learn more about the origin of Hyperion. What I mean is, when it comes to Hyperion, he actually survived an incursion. Now remember, an incursion is when two Earths are about to crash into each other, and when they do, both universes are destroyed. And so this Hyperion, remember, he is from a different universe. And in his universe, he actually went through a whole incursion process. He looked up one day and he saw another Earth about to crash into his Earth. And so with that, he tried to use his powers as a way to stop both Earth from crashing into each other. But of course, both Earths still did and both universes were destroyed. Now with that happening, he was left in the white void. Of course, the white void mean a whole area of nothing. He was just stuck between an empty space of time. And so with that, it seems like he'll be stuck there in that void. But of course, at the very last minute, he was pulled by AIM. And that is how he arrived in the main Marvel Universe. He survived his incursion, but then he was pulled out of the white void by AIM. Now we do jump back over to the present day, where we actually pick up with the Avengers right now, trying to figure out why in the world is AIM there in the Savage Land 4. But here comes the problem though, before the Avengers are actually able to get any kind of information out of AIM, well, that is the moment the dead body of the man from earlier, the one who was killed by the sample of the genetic bomb, well, that is the moment his body begins to attack the Avengers and also AIM as well. And so you do have the Avengers being able to actually handle the body and finally stop it. But once they do that, that is the moment where you actually have Hyperion realize that the life inside the cocoons from earlier are beginning to hatch. Now, there is one more page that continues the origin of Hyperion. And remember, we left off with him basically being pulled out of the white void by AIM. But the question is, how did he join the Avengers? Well, this one page tells us the Avengers were able to locate Ames' hideout and break him out. And then, of course, he joined the Avengers. And that's really it. Now, to close on Avengers number four, we actually see the Avengers right now taking this group of AIM in to go to prison. But that is when you actually have one of the members of AIM tell the Avengers that they are lucky they were able to figure out about this bomb because again, this bomb kind of went unnoticed. But then he kind of give hints that there was a seventh bomb and that bomb actually landed of course in Norway. And so right now there is another team of AIM about to get that bomb and begin their own kind of project as well. 
Now, we do jump over to Avengers number five. And with this issue right here, it is another origin story. And this one picks up with the origin of Smasher because she was another character that Jonathan Hickman had introduced in his first volume of the Avengers. But with that being said, we actually pick up in the beginning of another flashback. In this flashback, we see Iliandra, the leader of the Shi'ar Empire, actually telling one of her imperial guards which was smasher to go to earth and warn earth about what is coming their way because apparently one of the planets that borders the Shi'ar empire in earth was destroyed recently and so with that she sent smasher down to earth as a way to warn the avengers but when he got to earth of course his ship crashed and he died but piece of his armor or piece of his suit was left behind. Of course, the goggles he wears when he's in his Smasher outfit. And it is actually found by a young girl known as Izzy Kane. And this is going to be her origin of how she became the next Smasher. Now we do learn a tad bit about Izzy Kane. And what we do learn is that Izzy Kane used to go to college, but she came back home to help her grandfather and her father run the farm. Now her grandfather is on the verge of dying. Now I do want to mention that her grandfather actually has a connection to one of the heroes in the Marvel Universe. And this is Jonathan Hickman kind of digging into the history of Marvel because this character, her grandfather, is actually a super 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 old character but either way after a while of her talking to her grandfather and talking to her father well at night she decides to put on the goggles she found earlier that belonged to the imperial guard smasher now with her doing that of course that led to her actually becoming the new smasher she got a whole new armor put on her automatically. Now this begins the process of her actually going to the home world of the Shi'ar Empire. And the reason why I say that is because when she put this suit on, that is when we come to find out there is a built-in computer. And with this built-in computer, it tells her, hey listen, it's time for you to actually fly to the home world of the Shi'ar Empire. And the reason why, because you need to complete your training or really begin your training. And so for her, she's kind of like, heck yeah, take me away. Let me go to the home world and become something I have never imagined me to become, which is a hero. Now, this begins the process of her actually becoming an Imperial Guard. Now, if you're wondering what is an Imperial Guard, so when it comes to your Shi'ar Empire, the Shi'ar has a queen or king, whoever. But then underneath that is the Imperial Guard. And the Imperial Guards are the ones who usually do the dirty work, but at the same time, they're your top notch soldiers, your top notch warriors. They protect their queen and king, and also they're the ones you send in first to handle the biggest threats that come to the Shi'ar Empire. And so with that being said, this is a possibility that she could be the new smasher of the Imperial Guards. Now we actually jump over to Tony Stark and there is a good reason why because Tony Stark is right now working with one of Ex Nihilo's past creations. Now remember, Ex Nihilo was trying to rewrite the human DNA, but before that, well really at the same time, he was creating his first perfect human and that was Adam. Well, he called it Adam as a way to reference Adam and Eve. But this Adam was supposed to be his first of many perfect humans on Earth. Now, here comes a problem, though. In our last video, when Adam came out of his cocoon, he began to speak builder code. And that was a huge problem. And we learned that from Ex Nihilo's sister, Abyss. Because when it comes to builder code, that is something no one else should be able to speak except the builders, the ones who made Ex Nihilo and Abyss the ones who sent out people out there to recreate the universe and their image. But with Adam speaking Builder's Code, unfortunately, Tony Stark has no way to communicate with him. And so he's trying to translate Builder Code into English 
but of course he is having a hard time doing that. Now we stay in the present day, but we continue the origin of Izzy Kane. And the reason why I say that's because we actually jump over to the Shi'ar Empire fighting against some sentient drones. And while they're fighting against these drones, well, that is the moment where you actually have Izzy Kane appear again as a smasher, but in the present day. And because she's actually part of the Shi'ar Empire. And so with her being part of the Empire, even though she's part of the Avengers, when they call out for help, she has to answer. And luckily for them, with her being part Avenger and part Shi'ar Empire Army, she was able to bring the Avengers with her to actually help out to fight against these drones that are attacking the Shi'ar Empire. Now, this leads into the big moment for Izzy Kane, because once the Avengers, the Shi'ar Empire, and Smasher, aka Izzy Kane, are actually able to deal with those drones, well, that is when you have Gladiator appear. Now, if I remember correctly, Gladiator, I want to say at this point, was the leader of the Shi'ar Empire, but usually he is the leader of the Imperial Guards. Like, he is number one of all of them. But I want to say at this point, he was the leader of the Empire. I could be wrong. But either way, with him being here, he actually tells uh, Izzy Kane that she'll become the next Imperial Guard. And that is huge because, again, she is the first human from Earth to actually be able to join the Imperial Guards. And that is a huge honor to have. Now, on top of that, that is the moment where we actually learn the connection with her grandfather and the rest of the superheroes on Earth. And the reason why, because her grandfather, Dan Kane, actually fought in World War II. And with that being said, he fought alongside with Steve Rogers, AKA Captain America. And so with that, Steve Rogers is proud of Izzy Kane because she's basically becoming a hero just like her grandfather. And that is her small quick origin story for the Smasher. So when we jump over to Avengers number six, we actually pick up with Chang Chi trying to talk to Captain Universe and trying to learn more about the hosts of Captain Universe. Because you have to remember, when it comes to Captain Universe, the actual Captain Universe powers, it comes from a energy symbiote, basically. It goes around to find different hosts across the universe anytime the universe is in danger. And so with that being said, in our last video, we found out the powers of Captain Universe did find a new host. Her name is Tamara. But the problem is the Avengers have no idea about Tamara. They don't know about her past or nothing. And so it is the Avengers trying to learn more about her. They want to learn more about her past. And so they brought in Chang Chi as a way to meditate with Tamara. And he asked the Captain Universe side, can I please talk to your host? Because your host, we need to know more about her. But the problem is, when it comes to Tamara, she's very broken mentally and physically. And Captain Universe actually says that his host or its host is very broken. So it's going to be hard for a chain she to learn more about Tamara. Now, it doesn't take Jonathan Hickman too long to go ahead and dive into the origin of Tamara because right off the bat, while you have Chang Chi and Tamara meditating, hoping that it will be a way to open up her mind so that they'll be able to learn more about her past, that is the moment where she remembers that there was a car accident. That is the last thing she remembers. Nothing else before that or after that. The only thing she remembers is a car crash. But right before that car crash, she did look in the back seat. And what she had in the back seat was her daughter. And that is the last thing she remembers. A car crash and she was involved in that car crash and her daughter was in the back seat. Now this actually leads us into the big moment. Because you actually have Chang Chi ask Tamara, does she know what happened to her daughter? Because the reason why, after the car accident, there has been no records of her daughter at all. 
So apparently after Tamara got in that car crash, her daughter just disappeared. But on top of that, Tamara was in a coma for 10 whole years. 10 whole years, she was in a coma. And so for Tamara, she's kind of like, I miss my daughter's birthday, but now you're telling me that there's a possibility she could have been killed, kidnapped, or she was adopted by someone else. No one knows. But I was gone for 10 whole years in a coma. And so that makes her freak out. And when she freaks out, you actually have the Captain Universe side take back over the body of Tamara and basically tells Chang Chi, see, I told you, my host is broken. But continuing with the big moment, you actually have Chang Chi as Captain Universe. Why are you here though? Why did you pick her as your host? And you kind of have Captain Universe not really answer that question, but does answer the question, why is she here or why it's here? Why did it pick Tamara as its new host? And you have Captain Universe tell Chang Chi because the universe is dying. Remember, the only time the Captain Universe powers pop up is when the universe is in grave danger. And so right now, the universe is in grave danger. And so that is why it picked a host on Earth, because Earth is very significant when it comes to the multiverse. Remember, the multiverse is dying. When two Earths collide, both universes are wiped out, an incursion. And so right now, that is why Captain Universe is here, because Earth is is so significant when it comes to the universe if earth goes away the whole universe dies and so with that being said that is why captain universe had picked tamara because right now it needs a host from earth as a way to protect earth before earth is wiped out and goodbye universe but to wrap up this video and to actually lead us into the next big thing that Jonathan Hickman is going to give us in this run, you do have Captain Universe actually walk over to Tony Stark's room. Now, when she does that, we get reminded that Tony Stark is trying to help out Adam because remember, Ex Nihilo made Adam, but Adam only speaks builder code and that is a huge problem because no one is able to translate builder's code and so tony stark has been working with adam to hopefully translate builder code into english but we come to find out that tony stark thought his name was black veil vale, but captain universe actually comes over she does use her powers as a way to give adam the ability to speak english and that is the moment where he says my name is not Black Veil, vale, it's Night Mask, but on top of that, I need to tell you something. Something big is coming, and what it is, is called the White Event, and that is where we're going to end. So getting into New Avengers number four, we actually pick up with Black Panther and Mr. Fantastic working on a way to recreate a bomb that Black Swan used in our last video. Now remember, in our last video, Black Swan came from a different Earth. And when she came to the main Marvel Universe Earth, she had a bomb with her as a way to destroy the old Earth that she came from. And so right now you have the Avengers trying to recreate that as a way to be one of the many weapons they can use to actually hopefully stop an incursion from happening. Now remember, when it comes to an incursion, an incursion is when two Earths from different universes are about to crash into one another. When both Earths crash into each other, both universes goes away. But Black Swan told the Avengers that if they get rid of one Earth, then the other Earth stays. And so right now you have the Avengers making this bomb as a way just to be sure they have a weapon to save their Earth from an incursion from happening. Now, you do have Tony Stark tell Mr. Fantastic and Black Panther that he also has his own weapon they can use 
as a way to destroy another planet. And that is the moment where you have Tony Stark reveal that he has made a Dyson Spear. Now a Dyson Spear is a piece of technology that goes around the sun to basically weaponize the sun. And so right now the Avengers can use the sun's energy as a way of a weapon to protect their earth from an incursion. And so now the Avengers have two ways to protect their earth. Now, you do have Reed tell Tony to call it Soul's Hammer as a way to represent the God of the Sun. And so now the Avengers have two ways to protect their world. But then we jump over to Doctor Strange and we see him right now looking over a certain book. Now, this book, I cannot pronounce the name. And so I am going to call it the Blood Bible. Matter of fact, Doctor Strange calls the book by the same name himself. But either way, when Wong walks into the room to see what Doctor Strange is looking at, Wong is so scared to his own core that he's wondering why in the world is Doctor Strange looking over the Blood Bible. Because Wong says it takes 40 men to make one spell even work from that book. But on top of that, whoever uses that book their soul is tainted. And so Wong wants to know why in the world is Strange looking at that book. But that is the moment you have Strange point out. If he is looking at a book like that, that means something big is coming. But then out of nowhere, that is the moment Strange gets called away because another incursion is about to happen. And so you do have Doctor Strange being able to meet up with the rest of the Illuminati, which is Black Bolt, Black Panther, Namor, Tony Stark, Reed Richards, and also the Beast from the X-Men. Now with all these guys standing around, they were hoping for two more things to happen before this incursion actually happened. The first was they were hoping that the incursions would stay in remote locations away from innocent people because they don't want the public to know about this at all. Because if word gets out about how the earth could possibly end, it could cause chaos across the earth. But on top of that, they were hoping that they had more time before this next incursion actually happened. And the reason why, because their weapons are not done. The weapons we saw earlier were not completed at all yet. And so now you have all these guys standing around trying to think of a way to actually stop this incursion from happening. But here comes the problem. All of their ideas basically means somebody must stay on the other earth and possibly die with that earth. And so you have Namor walk up and tell them it's time for y'all to man up. We don't have time for you guys to sit here and try to figure out a way to save both earths or try to find a way to make sure that your souls are not tainted. It's time for you guys to man up and realize that somebody could die. It's us or the other earth. And right now, it should be them, not us. And so you do have the Illuminati actually go over to the other earth to begin the process of finding a way to destroy it, to save their own earth. But when they get over there to this other earth, they're in luck because this earth is now being destroyed by Galactus. Now, this is not the main Marvel Universe Galactus. Matter of fact, this is Galactus from a alternate universe, from this Earth universe. And so this Galactus is actually doing a great thing for the Illuminati. And the reason why, because if this Earth is destroyed, then the main Marvel Universe Earth will be spared and that is a great thing but here comes the problem when you are a group of heroes and you see people are in danger you actually want to go over there to save their lives and so for a brief moment you actually have most of the illuminati want to go over there to actually stop galactus to save everyone lives on this earth but again 
like I said earlier, this is a great thing because if Galactus does destroy this Earth, that means the main Marvel Universe Earth will be spared. But that is the moment where they are confronted by a character known as Terax. Now Terax is a Herald of Galactus and that title is actually very important because if you're holding that title, that means your job is to go across the universe to find different planets for Galactus to actually devour. Now, you do have Terax point out one big thing for the Illuminati, and that is with Galactus being here right now, he's doing them a favor. Because remember, when it comes to incursions, when two Earths are about to crash into each other, and if they do, both universes die. And so, with Galactus basically destroying this Earth, that means the other Earth is spared, but both universes get to survive. And so you have Terax say, listen, Galactus is a cosmic being. He is supposed to be at the end of the universe. But with this Earth about to crash into your guys' Earth, our universes are dying too soon. And Galactus cannot have that. And so we decided to save the universe by getting rid of our Earth. And that is very huge. But again, when you have the Illuminati, a group of heroes, of course, they still want to try to stop Galactus to save all of those innocent people lives. And so with that being said, the last page of the first issue we are covering, we see the Illuminati actually try to fight against Terax. And that is the end of just chapter one. But then we jump over to New Avengers number five, where we pick up with Reed Richards talking to the Black Swan. Now the way she is talking, she does bring up the fact that the heroes were able to survive the last incursion, meaning that this takes place after what happened at the ending of our last chapter. But we have no idea how the Illuminati was able to actually survive that. But we'll find out very soon. But either way, you do have Reed bring up the idea that the Black Swan should actually tell the Illuminati how everything started. How did the incursions really start? And so you do have Black Panther appear inside the cage with Black Swan putting a bomb around her neck to basically force her to be on her best behavior as they take her into another room so that she'll be able to explain how everything has started. But while she is leaving, that is the moment we come to find out that the Illuminati was actually able to capture Tyrax. And that is very huge. And that is the moment we jump back to the ending of the last chapter. And that is the moment how we learn how the heroes survived the last incursion because we jump back to the ending of the first chapter and we see that while the heroes were fighting against Tyrax, well, Galactus took that time as a way to begin the process of speeding up the process of actually destroying the Earth because with that Earth gone, that means both universes will survive. And so while you had the heroes fighting against Tyrax, Galactus was able to complete the process and the earth began to fall apart. And so with that, the Illuminati had no choice but to leave, their, leave that earth behind and go back to the original main Marvel Universe Earth. But when they did, they took Tyrax with them as well and took him as a prisoner. Now, you do have Reed Richards bring Black Swan to the rest of the Illuminati because remember, they want her to explain the origin of the incursions. Why did this happen? But on top of that, also explain who she is and where she came from. Now, real quick, you do actually have her see Doctor Strange and that is the moment we come to find out that apparently she hates magic users. And so right now, she especially hates 
Doctor Strange, but you do have the rest of the Illuminati bring her back on track so that she can begin the process of actually telling everyone how everything started when it came to the incursions. Now the Black Swan begins to tell the Avengers that she is from another Earth, but on top of that, she's from a family of royalty, and she lived in a city called the Hidden City. Now her brother was next in line to rule the city, but he also had a key. This key was given to him by the Ivory Kings something we are going to learn about in later videos. But the key was able to open a door to Library of Worlds. It was like a train station to lead people to another universe, except no one was able to actually use the library unless they were trained and only the great ladies knew how to use the library. But that is the moment Black Swan World was part of an incursion. But when it started, the Black Priests, another group of beings we are going to learn about in later videos, came from another Earth to destroy Black Swan's Earth. Now everyone on Black Swan's world died, but she was able to escape taking the key from her brother and hiding in the library. That is when she met the Great Ladies, who are also known as Black Swans, which of course made her the next Black Swan. But the Black Swans used the Library of Worlds as a way to escape from that incursion. Now, that is the moment where you actually have Tony Stark remind Black Swan that they want to know how the incursions actually started. Yes, they are happy to learn about her origin, but they want to know the origin of the incursions. And that is when you have Black Swan say, it all started with one event, with one birth, the birth of the Great Destroyer, and his name is Raboom Allah. Now, with that being said, she said when he was born, that is when the incursions began. Now, that is a huge piece of information. But then you have Reed ask her, is there any way for them to actually save their world from any other incursions or really to stop the incursions? And that is the moment you have Black Swan say, there is no way to actually stop incursions from happening because the multiverse must die. The multiverse is dying, but there is a way to save your universe from any more future incursions. And that is a way of just basically destroying the earth. Evacuate every single human being on planet earth and take them away and then blow up the earth to save this universe from the incursions. But then, out of nowhere, you do have Black Swan actually tell the Illuminati that she has the same tech they have that they use that warns them when the next incursion is going to happen. And she tells them one is about to happen right now. And that is when you have Reed realize is happening in Latveria, the home of Doctor Doom. Now, before the Illuminati and the Black Swan actually head over to Latveria, you do have the Illuminati show Black Swan into another room to show her that they were able to recreate the same bomb that she used when she first arrived in the main Marvel Universe. This bomb is powerful enough to destroy another Earth. Now, with her seeing this bomb, it tells her that the Illuminati are taking the first step of going down a dark path, the same path that she had to take when it came to surviving incursions, meaning that the Illuminati are becoming what she wants them to become, which is being okay with taking lives. Because if they want to save their universe, they're going to have to kill other people to save their universe. And that is something heroes usually have a hard time doing, which is being able to kill. Well, except one hero on the Illuminati. 
Now you do have the Illuminati and Black Swan actually go over to the incursion point. Now this is very huge because usually when someone goes into the incursion point, that is when they are able to see the Earth or the other Earth about to crash into their Earth. Now the last two times the Illuminati had dealt with an incursion, both zones have been red except when the Illuminati and Black Swan walk into the incursion point, well, that is when they realize the area is blue. And that is a huge thing because usually when two Earths are about to crash into each other and someone is in the incursion point, the sky is red. The area is completely red. But with this area being completely blue, that is the moment where you actually have Black Swan realize this is not a good thing. This means the map makers have arrived. Now, the Illuminati was also hoping that to come to Latveria to actually stop the incursion before Victor Von Doom had found out. But of course, Victor Von Doom had found out because these map makers that's right now scaring the Black Swan decided to actually attack the Castle of Doom, which means Victor Von Doom got angry. And so now these map makers are feeling the wrath of Dr. Doom. But now the question is though, what in the world is a map maker? And that is when you have Black Swan actually explain what is or what are the map makers. Now, you do have Black Swan explain to us that when it comes to the map makers, they are a race of creatures that travel across the multiverse. Now, when they arrive into a certain universe, they automatically go to that universe Earth and begin the process of killing everything on that Earth just basically draining the life force off that earth. Now, once that earth is completely dead, they then begin the process of traveling over to another universe to do the same process all over again. Now, the way they actually travel across the multiverse is actually using the incursions as a way for them to travel into the next universe. And what they usually do is they rig the earth they're on at the moment to explode. But right before that earth does explode, they do make sure a piece of that earth does crash into the next earth they're going to because that piece is their bridge as a way for them to travel into the next universe. And so that is how the map makers get around the multiverse, but to also continue their plans to kill every single earth across the multiverse because their goal is to just drain the life force off each earth they go to and black swan is completely scared because right now it seems like these map makers are trying to do the same thing right now to the main marvel universe now you do have black swan actually tell the illuminati to go ahead and kill this dead earth because once they do that that will close the incursion point which means it will stop the map makers from actually coming into the main Marvel Universe. And so you have her tell the Illuminati to use the bomb, but the problem is though, when it comes to this team of heroes, they still have a hard time using the bomb. Yes, this is a dead planet, but you're still talking about actually using a bomb as a way to destroy an entire planet, something they never have done before. But either way, they don't have a choice because if they don't do it now, the map makers will still come into the main Marvel Universe and kill everything in their sight. And so you have Black Panther being the one to make the bomb go off, and the dead earth is completely gone, which means the incursion point closes and the heroes can see or live to see another day. And so they do leave Latveria, but with them leaving Latveria, 
that now has Doctor Doom intrigued to learn more about what in the world is going on because he saw the heroes arrive in Latveria even though while he was fighting against the map makers he saw them and he saw them leave which means he knows there is a huge connection between those map makers and the Illuminati because once they have left everything was quiet again and so Doctor Doom will begin his own plans on figuring out what the Illuminati are doing. Now, after the Illuminati was able to stop that incursion, they do put Black Swan right back in her prison. But let's not forget, her prison is right next to Tyrax. And Tyrax is from that other universe where Galactus had destroyed the Earth to save both universes before they crash into each other in that earlier incursion. But with Tyrax being locked up right next to Black Swan, Black Swan is able to use her ability to talk to Tyrax with her mind. And with her doing that, she does ask him a couple questions. The first question was, does he miss working for Galactus? Of course, he says no. He hated working for Galactus. But she didn't ask him, do you enjoy destroying worlds? And do you want to continue to destroy worlds? And he says yes. And this is actually very huge because you didn't have Black Swan say, don't worry, our time is coming soon one day just have to be patient and that right there is very huge for later videos down the road but that is the moment where we actually jump back over to dr doom and the reason why because we see some doom bots and actually his son bringing over a container but in this container well there is a piece of the dead planet that the Illuminati had just destroyed earlier. And that is huge because Dr. Doom was already intrigued on learning about what in the world the Illuminati was up to and why was there another Earth about to crash into their Earth. But on top of that, you do have one of the Doom boss say that this piece fell out of the sky and that is huge because remember when it comes to the map makers when they're about to travel from one universe over to the next universe they use the incursions as a way for them to travel but here comes the thing though they use a piece of the dead earth they're coming from as a way to travel over into the next universe and so this piece right here could have came from that big piece the map makers had used earlier but either way dr doom is now intrigued to learn more about what just happened in his country but with We pick up in the superflow. The superflow is the informational space between universes. Now we actually see the builders have made creatures known as the caretakers and the curators as a way to watch the superflow and help them shape the universes. Remember that the builders were the first beings in the universe and began the process of shaping the universe in their image. Now focusing on this caretaker, he is getting word from the curator that many other stations in different parts of the superflow that were tasked to watch over different universes are dying. We know why, the incursions, but this is caretaker is in charge of the big one and he tells the curator to begin the white event in each of the surviving universes hoping to help the universes prepare for what to come. Most of these universes don't get the white event except one and that is the main Marvel universe. But then we jump to Earth where we saw the white event 
had already started and there was a bright light. Now that bright light is going to be important down the road, but for now, focusing on Adam. Because Adam, the character that looks black, was made by a character known as Ex Nihilo. Adam was made by Ex Nihilo to be the perfect human and lead the new version of the human race in a new kind of world. I'm going to explain more of that here later on, but for now, Adam was changed, no longer being a perfect human to lead the human race. He became a night mask, something completely different because of this white event. You then have Captain Universe tell him to tell the Avengers what is going on. We then pick up with these random moments that are actually very important because each moment takes place one hour apart from each other, starting with five hours ago. Now the only reason we pick up with these random moments and these random people because of what Adam said. He needs to find the others. These other people could could be important for this white event. The way you have Higman writing this, he's making you think that these random people could be very important for the story, but in reality, only one of them are, and that one person is going to become something new and powerful for the world. But getting back to the Avengers and Adam, that is the moment you actually have Adam explain more about the white event, telling us that a white event is when a planet is about to change on a universal level. There are usually heralds chosen for this white event, which we are going to learn who the herald is in a moment, usually leads the new world in the correct direction. But the night mask are people who help this chosen herald lead the planet in this new evolved state. The problem is that there should have been more than one night mask, and Adam is the only one there, which tells them something is wrong with the universe, but in reality, the multiverse. But with Adam using the machines of Tony Stark, he was able to figure out that someone at a college was just chosen to be the star brand, the herald chosen by the white event. So all of those moments we saw a moment ago, they were showing us someone was there at the college being chosen to become the star brand. Now when the Avengers arrive at this college to see what had happened, who was chosen to be this new star brand, well they come to find out that everything is wrecked. Nothing is around anymore, but when they get closer to see who was the chosen one, well, they come to find out it is just a random boy who is completely naked and confused on what in the world had happened to him. Except we get one more page that shows us those moments where we saw different people thinking that one of them could have been the star brand, but in reality, it was him. He was the chosen one and he was there in each of those moments. Now this is the moment where we actually see the Avengers messing up. Because yes, they are coming here to help this kid. Also, to get an idea what in the world is going on. How they are coming at this kid is all wrong. Because right now he is lying in a pile of dead bodies. Everyone in this college was killed because when he was chosen, a high amount of energy was released. But the Avengers also come with all of these powerhouse characters the world knows. Now, he does tell the Avengers his name, Kevin Connor, who was your perfect quiet child. He never been in any kind of trouble, but either way, that is the moment he begins to freak out because of the dead bodies, meaning that he is about to go active and could cause more damage. You have everyone wanting to step back to let him release this unknown power energy. Well, I say everyone except the Hulk, because the Hulk thinks he can handle this and maybe help this kid calm down, because the kid is freaking out because what just had happened to him. Except when the Hulk gets closer to Connor, well, that is the moment we see Connor sending the Hulk right out into space. This is just showing a small glimpse of how powerful this new Star Brand character is and how powerful he can still become down the road. But that is the moment where you actually have the Avengers 
fighting against Starbrand. Now, they're not trying to fight against him in a way kind of like he is some kind of bad guy that must be stopped. But in reality, they're fighting against him because they need him to calm down because they're afraid what he is able to do. Because when they arrived, all they saw were a bunch of dead bodies. Of course, of course, not of course. Of course, all of these college kids and professors who had died when Connor was chosen to become the new star brand character. But while the battle is going on, there are two characters who are not fighting in this battle, which is Adam and also Captain Universe. Now there is a good reason why these two characters are right now not fighting alongside with the Avengers because they're trying to figure out what in the world is going on. Because to these two characters, there were some kind of system the builders have made and that system is now broken and for some strange reason, there's now a random star brand on Earth. Now we know why the system is broken because what happened back in the super flow. But either way, you do have the Avengers being able to grab onto Starbrand and hoping that they'll be able to actually capture him. But then we see Adam finally step in to tell the Avengers stop what they're doing and that he'll be able to actually kind of give Connor some kind of answers on what in the world is going on. And so that is the moment where you actually have Adam disappear with Connor and they go into the super flow. But when Adam and Connor arrive at the super flow, well, that is the moment you have Adam realize what had happened with the white event. Because remember, when it came to Adam and Captain Universe, they said the universe is broken. The system is broken. The white event is not going as planned. And because the white event is not going as planned, there had to be a reason. Well, we saw that reason. The Superflow fell apart. It was destroyed. This system that was built by the builders is now gone. And so for Adam, he's kind of like, this is why the white event did not go as planned. Because what happened here in the super flow? But now the question is, what actually happened here in the super flow to cause all this mess to happen in the first place? Now, we kind of have an idea. It's the incursions. But for Adam, he has no idea about the incursions yet. Really, the only people who know is on Earth the Illuminati. And so right now you have Adam telling all this new information over to Connor about the super flow, the white event, and him being a star brand. But now they have more answers. Sorry, they have more questions that need answers. And so right now you have Adam saying there is only one person who can actually tell him what happened here. But we do jump back over to the Avengers. And when we do, you actually have the Avengers right now trying to think what in the world are they going to do with Connor? Because he just disappeared with Adam. Now they have two powerful characters out there on their own and have no idea what in the world they can do. But that is the moment you actually have Tony Stark tell Steve Rogers that he was able to put some kind of tracker on Adam. Because remember, in our last Avengers video, Adam was working with Tony Stark to kind of learn the language that Adam was speaking when he first arrived on Earth builder code but then you have tony stark freak out because adam just teleported with connor to mars and of course on mars there is only one person that adam would go to that is on mars and of course that person is ex nihilo and let's not forget ex nihilo was the one who created adam because ex nihilo was sent by the builders as a way to kind of judge different planets to see if the race on that planet should be destroyed or should be kind of revived or evolved in a new way and so when he came to mars he brought mars back to life but he was trying to make earth the next change in the universe he was trying to evolve the human race but the problem is now 
Adam is here because he feels like Ex Nihilo might know something about why the Superflow thing happened and why the White event happened as well. Now this is the moment where everything comes together because you actually have us get a better understanding why the white event happened on Earth. Because when the white event happens, it usually means a planet is about to go through a universal change. So the question is now, why Earth was chosen to go through the event? How is the Earth going through a change? That is the moment we kind of find out why. Because when Abyss, the sister of Ex Nihilo, goes on to analyze Adam, that is the moment we come to find out Ex Nihilo has done more to the Earth than he let on in our first Avengers video. Remember, he sent down genetic bombs as a way to evolve the Earth, to make it better. Only a few areas are dealing with those genetic bombs that crash. Except that is the moment you have Ex Nihilo say he was also changing the planet. Each of those bombs are working together to actually make the Earth a sentient planet. And that is huge. He is trying to give Earth some kind of life. A mind of his own. And that is huge. That is the moment that explains why the White Event was chosen for Earth. Yes, the White Event system was broken thanks to the Superflow incident, but the reason why Earth was chosen is because it is going through a universal change. Thanks to Ex Nihilo, the Earth is about to become a living planet. And since the Avengers told Ex Nihilo and his sister to stay away from Earth, Ex Nihilo can't stop the process. The Earth is going through a change and Adam needs to be the one to kill the life of the Earth. Let's not forget, the Avengers have been tracking Adam and Connor, and they know that he is on Mars. So you had the Avengers wanting to go to Mars, but that is the moment where you actually have Tony Stark say that Adam and Connor are back on Earth, and they are at one of the spots the bombs Ex Nihilo had made crash at. So we see Adam and Connor arrive at the spot, but these spots have been quarantined, and also meaning that no one is allowed to be in the area, except when Connor and Adam arrive, well that is the moment these cocoons begin to hatch, and these creatures begin to speak Builder's Code, the Builder language of the Builders, the first being in the universe. Then they come together to create some kind of singular creature, which tells us that this is supposed to be the brain for the new life the planet is supposed to have. Except when this brain begins the process of trying to absorb Adam and Connor, well that is the moment Connor's star brand powers begin to go crazy and he quickly blows up the brain, killing it. But that is the moment you actually have the Avengers arrive and they want to capture Adam and Connor because they feel like these two characters are too powerful to have out there in the world. Except, of course, these two guys don't want to be captured at all and want to leave to learn more about what is happening with the planet. Of course, the Avengers say no. And so, of course, it leads into a big battle between the two sides. And this battle does go on for a few pages. Except once we arrive at the end of the fight, that is when we see Connor and Adam actually letting the Avengers take them in. But of course, where can you hold something like these guys who are so powerful? Well, that is the moment we see that the Avengers have put them in Tony Stark's Dyson Spear he made over in New Avengers. Because remember, the Dyson Spear was a weapon made to help the Illuminati deal with the incursions. Because the Dyson Spear has the ability to use the sun as a weapon, but now Adam and Connor are locked inside the Dyson Spear. And that is where the story ends for now, for more mayhem to happen down the road. But th
So getting into today's video, we pick up with Avengers number 10. And we see Maria Hill, who at this point is the leader of S.H.I.E.L.D. And she is with a random agent. In front of her right now is a random dead body. But we kind of find out that she knows this person who is dead. Apparently, his name is Agent Michaud. And Maria Hill wants to know what led to this moment here. So that is when we jump back eight hours ago and pick up with the Avengers being called into Canada. Of course, they're being called in by Department H, who is the Canadian version of S.H.I.E.L.D. But either way, they were called here by Agent Michaud because one of Ex Nihilo's genetic bombs landed in Canada. Remember that in our second Avengers video, the Avengers met a character known as Ex Nihilo, who was trying to change the Earth, make it better, make Earth a sentient planet. And so he sent genetic bombs to change the Earth, to make the human race better. But you have Agent Michelle say that they have sent in their Canadian version of the Avengers known as Alpha Flight into the area where the genetic bomb had crashed at. So that is when we watched the footage of what happened to Alpha Flight when they had entered into the area. Except when they entered, it did not take long for everything to fall apart. This area was closed off, yes, but of course, you had the area begin to go under some kind of change, where it seems like this part of the Earth is alive, which does go with the idea of ex nihilo bombs being genetic bombs to give the Earth life, making it a sentient being. The last part of the footage was the newest gladiator, the leader of Alpha Flight, screaming into the camera saying, Stay away. This area is death. Of course, the footage dies at that point. Now, the problem is that the footage they watched took place one month ago. So now the question at this point in time is, why did Canada wait so long to ask for help? Because they have been trying to break into the place. Plus, they did not want to ask help from America. Except Wolverine realized that they used a nuke, but it did not even work. They even tried to dig underground, but the sphere, force field, that has enclosed the area is also underground. So now the Avengers are going to go in there and Agent McCould, Mishuld, sorry, must go with them as well. So we didn't pick up one hour before the beginning of this video, where you had the Avengers use Manifold as a way to teleport into the area. Except when they get into the area, well, they are welcomed by some kind of creatures. This is tying back to the idea that Ex Nihilo genetic bombs had also created life in this area. But of course, you have these creatures tell the Avengers to follow them to a certain spot in the forest. Except that is the moment where everything begins to fall apart for the Avengers and Agent Michelle. Because that is the moment you actually have the Avengers be confronted by Vladiator, who we thought was killed a month ago before this moment, but she is alive. Then she asks to talk to Agent Michelle, but she says it in Builder Code and whispers something into his ear. Then everything goes black. That is the moment where the Avengers wake up outside the area. They are completely in a different area. They are even standing on top of random symbols, but they don't remember what happened after Vladiator had talked to Agent Michaud. Michaud even says he has six cameras on him. Nothing was recorded either. But when Wolverine goes on to ask Michaud what Vladiator has said to him, he tells Wolverine it doesn't even matter and kills himself by shooting himself in the head. But back in the present day, we pick up with Maria Hill meeting up with a new agent of Department H who then tells her about the footage he found on the dead body of Agent Michaud. Because remember, Michaud told Wolverine that he did not get anything, but that was a lie. Because that is the moment he says the cameras worked and they had recorded about 327 hours of footage there meaning that times moves different in that area than it did outside. Department H had watched every single video, and of course, we see that each Avenger member went through a different process. Some had evolved, some changed into alternate versions of themselves, 
and some turn into actual creatures. But of course, that all took place in 327 hours. Time had moved different in that area than it did outside the area. But getting back to the Avengers, they began to speak about what had happened in that area. And they say they remember what had happened. The reason why they said earlier they don't remember is because Maria Hill was around and they did not want her to know nothing. But Wolverine says that if Agent Michelle killed himself, whatever his daughter told him must have been very important. Then we finally get to see what she had said to her father. Yeah, Agent Michelle is the father to the newest gladiator, a character no one cares for. But she tells him that something amazing is happening here and the system is online. She must be here to protect it. The issue ends there and we are left wondering what in the world she meant by that. Now, the second story is actually a completely different thing and it felt like it would be a good idea to go ahead and tie it into this video where we see an Avengers team being sent into a country known as Macau that is owned by AIM, of course being Advanced Idea Mechanic, one of the many different evil organizations in Marvel Comics. This team is Chang-Chi, Cannonball, Sunspot, Black Widow, Captain Marvel, and finally Spider-Woman. They are going to go undercover to go inside AIM Casino to learn what kind of weapon they are selling and who they are going to sell it to. The problem is that when we jump over to the different members of the Avengers team sneaking into the country undercover, we see Chang Chi did not go undercover because he gets into a battle with the Chimeras. Now this is their only appearance in Marvel Comics, but of course they are here to hopefully buy this weapon from AIM. But they saw Chang Chi, knew who he was, and of course it began a battle between the two sides here. Now we actually get this moment where we jump back four hours before this Avengers team had begun the process of actually doing their undercover job, where they talked about who each person is going to watch over to learn what they plan to do with the weapon. Of course, there is a funny moment where they kind of discuss how they are going to get the information from their different targets. Some seem nice and quiet, and some are straight up torture. But back in the present moment, we see Captain Marvel, aka Carol Danvers, talking to a guy named Dr. Deeds, who is actually part of AIM as well, but this man was able to figure out real quickly that Carol Danvers is here in front of him. Yes, she was trying to pretend to be someone else, but of course, he figured it out. And now he is wondering why in the world she is here. Of course, we know why, but it seems like the two of them are going to continue to play this casino game and then maybe flirt their way to figure out what in the world Dr. Deeds is here for. But while you have Carol Danvers working her way to figure out what in the world is going on with Mr. Deeds, well, we see Chang Chi is still dealing with Chimera, just a random group of ninjas who are trying to get rid of Chang Chi. Of course, now it is time for Chang Chi to actually deal with their leader on his own. Again, this group never existed before this book and no one cared to use them again after this book. Now, let's not forget about Cannonball and Sunspot. Two people who were originally part of the new mutants team upgraded to the X-Men, but now they're on the Avengers team. Something to mention is that Sunspot has a lot of money thanks to his parents. So right now we see the two of them just spending his money, but they were able to convince two random AIM agents to spend some time with them. The last two members are Black Widow and Spider-Woman who are working their magic on a bunch of wealthy men who are wanted criminals in different parts of the world. Spider-Woman wants to do this clean, but of course Black Widow wants to break some bones and also maybe use some of her guns on them to get the information they are here for. There is another page where we see Chang Chi still getting ready to battle against the leader of Shimera. But we see a flashback where Iron Man had given him a weapon. 
something Chang Chi had used before, but weapons that weren't made by Iron Man, so it is him evolving and opening up to the idea of using things he never had before to help him win battles. But then we pick up with Carol Danvers and Mr. D's. And the reason why is because this is the moment while they were playing this game, Dees was cheating, but that is not important. What is important is what he tells Carol Danvers, which is that AIM is not here to sell some kind of weapon. They are here to actually buy, which completely changes the reason why the Avengers are here, because they were supposed to figure out what AIM was selling, not buying. Getting back to Cannonball and Sunspot, well this is Hickman planning small things here and there for later stories because that is the moment we see Sunspot able to build a bond with these random AIM agents and they agree to work for Sunspot as double agents. Again, Hickman planning small things down the road. If you are wondering how Jessica Drew, aka Spider-Woman, and Black Widow are doing, well, we see that Black Widow had killed all of those wealthy criminals. Of course, that really did not get them the information they needed to gather from these men, so it's kind of like, really Black Widow, you kill these guys? But to close on this video, that is the moment where you actually have the Avengers team coming together thinking that they weren't able to gather any kind of information on AIM. That is the moment you have Chang Chi say that AIM is buying an army and they are gearing up for some kind of war. What war? Well, we have to continue on to figure out what war that is coming down the road. But that is the moment where we are going to end today's comic book video. To begin today's video, we pick up with Thor thinking about the last few things that had happened to the Avengers. Because he is thinking about how the universe is falling apart. But that is when he is confronted by Iron Man, who then tells him that they need to talk about something. He wants to talk about the children from one of the spots where a genetic bomb had hit the children that came from the Savage Land. Because remember that when it comes to Ex Nihilo, he has sent genetic bombs down to Earth to hopefully make the Earth have sentient life, but to also make the human race better than it was at first. That is what the story is bringing up now, because we see Iron Man showing videos of the children to Thor to point out that right now the children have no need for food, sleep, and on top of that, they don't need air when it comes to them swimming underwater. They are at perfect health as well. And to Iron Man, they are beyond human. They could be on Thor level, since Thor is a god. But this begins the next part, where Thor and Hyperion are going to teach the children how to survive out in the world. They need to learn how the world works because it is natural for any species to learn how to survive or how to adapt to the world they are born in. But this Iron Man asking Thor and Hyperion to help out to hopefully to learn more about the children to see what will happen next with them. But when we pick up with Iron Man checking up with Hyperion, we actually see Hyperion beginning to speak about what he remembers about his old Earth. Of course, his Earth was destroyed by an incursion but he was pulled out of the white void by AIM, advanced idea mechanic. But with him being here, he is trying to make sure it doesn't happen to this earth. Either way, you have Hyperion say they have broken the kids into multiple groups and they will have the groups come together to teach each other what they have learned from their instructor. So this group is with Spider-Man and Hyperion and they are working on building trust between each other. The second group 
is with Thor at the moment. When we actually jump over to Thor, we see him trying to tell the children a story hoping that it will inspire them to be like warriors. So what Thor is going to do is have the students work together to figure out how to look for a rock together and bring it back to him. So of course, his group is learning a completely different lesson than Spider-Man and Hyperion group are working on. We actually get a page to come to find out that Spider-Woman and Hawkeye are actually working with another group as well. By the way, they are doing these studies in the Savage Land, but these two are really not watching their group. They're using the sun in the Savage Land as a way to get a tan. But honestly, that is it for the moment for these characters. We then pick up with the character we actually learn about back in our Uncanny X-Men videos, Garrock. Now, after his first appearance, he only appeared about 12 more times between that story and this one. His story is that a vessel was exploring the South Pole. It crashed and leaving one sailor alive. That sailor found the Savage Land. Then he found a temple for the Stone God. Garrock, except he found a drink in front of the statue. He drank it and it turned him into Garrock himself. So he has become the guardian of the Savage Land. But the reason why we pick up with Garrock is because with him watching over the Savage Land, well that is when he sees a random ship land in the Savage Land and when it opens up, some hybrid creatures had came out of it and of course to Garrock, he says this is only going to bring problems into the world. These hybrid creatures actually belong to someone else. Now we get into the conversation that goes on between Thor and Hyperion. Because remember how I said in the beginning of the video, Thor was thinking about the ending of the universe. He's scared that whatever is coming the Avengers way, they won't be able to handle it at all. Hyperion has seen a world end, but he is really worried about the children that they are taking care of because they are wondering if all the attention, love, and teaching they are giving these children, is it worth whatever could be coming their way down the road. Now, while you have the Avengers working with most of these kids, they don't realize that some of the kids are missing. Some of those creatures Garrock has seen are going around kidnapping children. The reason why is because they are bringing them back to the bad guy of the story the high evolutionary and he has had a hand in a lot of different marvel characters creation he is a super smart character and his whole history is kind of complicated but he is going to study the children because he is going to tell the avengers a secret about the children now of course we see him putting these children into different containers and this is actually going to show something very interesting about the children, but of course brings up a questionable thing to do with the children. Now the Avengers are looking for the children, but on top of that you have Hyperion upset that these children have gone missing. The reason why? Because Hyperion really cared for those children. He is hoping that he will be able to find them and save them. On top of that, you have Captain Universe actually come out of nowhere to tell the Avengers that maybe she has something that could actually help the Avengers find the missing children. Of course, that person is Garak, the person who watches over the Savage Land. And remember, he was the one who saw the creatures that had appeared in the Savage Land, the ones that were going around kidnapping the missing children which means he is able to tell the Avengers what he has seen and where they need to go when it comes to saving the children. Now, the Avengers have been looking for the children for a while, and they weren't able to find the children. Of course, the reason why because there is a hologram set to look like a mountain, and that is the reason why they couldn't find the children. So once you have Garrock show the hologram to the Avengers, well, that is the moment you have the Avengers rush into the area and get ready to attack. 
Of course, this tells High Evolutionary that the Avengers are here and of course could mess up their whole plan. So he has a secret weapon, but this weapon actually ties into the project he's doing with the children. But the Avengers are about to learn what powerful weapon he has under his belt. His hidden weapon is the Terminus. This actually first appeared back in Fantastic Four number 269. And it was a weapon made by the Terminex race as a way to kill the Celestials in the universe. Well, actually get revenge against them. But with this being here, it requires a lot of energy for it to be working in the first place. So how is the High Evolutionary actually able to charge up this being in the first place? Either way, you have all the Avengers except Hyperion stay behind to battle the machine so that Hyperion can go ahead and save the children from the High Evolutionary. Now Hyperion does not take long before he bursts right into the area and goes straight for the High Evolutionary, except when he confronts him, he doesn't let High Evolutionary explain why he is doing all of this in the first place. But once High Evolutionary has a moment to explain what is going on he tells us that the children are like living batteries that is something else special about them that makes them very intriguing so again ex nihilo bombs have done something else amazing for the earth but either way you have hyperion use his powers as a way to shut everything down that means the terminus as well and the projects high evolutionary was working on here in the savage land but hyperion was able to figure out that the children were put into those containers those containers were like battery cells and the children just charge up the battery cells that powers up the terminus really the story ends with thor and hyperion once again having a conversation with one another about what they plan to do for the future can they actually save the future for the children and make this world a better place for them. Also, it is Hyperion kind of realizing that he is kind of like a father to these kids in some kind of way. But this is where To begin today's video, we pick up with Iron Man talking to Reed Richards about the incursions. Because apparently since the last incursion and since our last new Avengers video, it has been 28 days since the last incursions. Which means that the Avengers have not seen an incursion in 28 days. But with that being said, of course, it does make Reed and Tony Stark both worried what could be happening down the road for their universe. Now you do have Reed kind of give an update on different characters who are part of the Illuminati, starting with Beast. Now Beast only joined the Illuminati when Charles Xavier died, and of course Charles Xavier chose Beast to take his spot in the Illuminati. But either way though, Beast had apparently had gone through another mutation where his body has grown but his mind is still as sharp as ever. But either way, Beast has been talking to the Black Swan for the last couple days now remember the black swan came from a different universe and she was the one that has been teaching the avengers sorry the illuminati about the incursions when each one happens but either way though beast and her have been kind of building a bond with one another but then we jump into dr strange now remember in one of our earlier videos when it came to the new avengers dr strange had picked up the blood Bible and that kind of scared Wong when Wong saw Doctor Strange pick up that book but of course when Reed had went to go check up on Doctor Strange Wong said Doctor Strange is unable to talk and the reason why because he is trying to use those different spells as a way to power him up to get him ready for the future incursions that could happen down the road 
for the Illuminati. Now, the last update, of course, would be Black Panther and Namor. Now, remember, when it comes to these two characters, they have a history of hating each other because back in Avengers versus X-Men, when Namor had the power of the Phoenix, he flooded Wakanda, which was very huge. But of course, Black Panther is only working with Namor on the Illuminati as a way to figure out how to stop the incursions. But you do have Reed tell Tony Stark that over the last couple days, there have been small events here and there between Wakanda and Atlantis which could lead to a full-out war between the two sides. And of course, that concerns Reed and Tony both because Black Panther and Namor could fight in that war against each other and they need all hands on deck to stop the incursions from happening down the road. Now, this leads into a conversation between Black Panther and Namor. And this is why I say Jonathan Hickman is an amazing writer, especially when it comes to Namor. Because you have Namor walk up to Black Panther asking for peace. And you would think that this is Namor actually asking for peace because he believes Wakanda could easily win the war between the two nations. But in reality, it's Namor giving Black Panther the chance to escape the war. Because to Namor, Wakanda would easily lose to Atlantis. Atlantis would wipe out Wakanda in a brief second. And this is what Namor is thinking. And so you have Namor offering this peace treaty as a way to keep these two guys working together. Now, at this point in Marvel Comics, T'Challa is not in charge of Wakanda. It is Shuri. She's the one in charge of Wakanda. And so you have Namor actually asking T'Challa to take this peace offer over to his sister, but you didn't have T'Challa say no you should basically send this peace offer to my sister because then she'll actually sit down and think about it and she'll call the council and when she does that that is when i can actually talk to her and hopefully we can end the war with a nice lovely peace treaty and so you do have name more leave but it's name more saying you better take my offer because if you don't Wakanda will be wiped out by Atlantis. Now, we actually do jump over to Latveria, the home country of Doctor Doom, and we do go into Castle Doom, where we see Reed Richards, Doctor Strange, and Doctor Doom having a dinner with one another. Now, the reason why Doctor Doom had asked these guys here is because what happened in our last New Avengers video? And the reason why, because in our last New Avengers video, there was was another incursion. Now, it was a different kind of incursion, but it happened right in Latveria, again, the home country of Doctor Doom. And so with that happening right there, Doctor Doom learned about another Earth was about to crash into their Earth. On top of that, he watched the Illuminati appear, take care of that other Earth, then disappeared. And so for Doctor Doom, he wants to know what in the world is going on because he has hard proof that there was another Earth about to crash into the main Marvel Universe Earth. He has some of the dead bodies from that Earth kept in his castle right now and other pieces of that earth also kept in his castle as well and so he's really trying to make reed go ahead and tell him what in the world is going on but of course you do have reed and dr strange tell dr doom nothing because they know if they tell him just a small piece of anything it could lead to more problems down the road with dr doom and so you have reed and Doctor Strange leave with not telling Doctor Doom one single thing at all. Now, we actually do jump over to the Atelian, of course, the home of the Inhumans. Now, with us going here, the reason why, because Black Bolt is also part of the Illuminati. But of course, we have not gotten an update on what in the world is going on with him. And this is the moment where we actually learn that right now, Black Bolt has been keeping secrets from his wife and the rest of the Inhumans. And in that 
secret, he's also building a new device, a new weapon that could possibly help the Illuminati with the incursions. But with him building this weapon, he's also building it with one of his worst enemies, matter of fact, his own evil brother, Maximus. And so whatever this weapon is, he is trying to make this weapon as a way to help them possibly deal with the incursions or to possibly help the Inhumans down the road. But again, we have no idea yet. And we actually get into another conversation between Black Panther and Reed Richards. Now the reason why, because this is Black Panther coming to Reed, hoping that Reed can actually help Black Panther make the right decision, which is should Black Panther and Wakanda actually go through with this peace treaty with Namor and Atlantis? Because remember, when it comes to Black Panther and Namor, there's a lot of bad blood between these two characters. And Black Panther promised himself, Wakanda, and his ancestors that he will kill Namor for what Namor did to Wakanda back in Avengers vs. X-Men. But for right now, he is not doing that because Namor and him are part of the Illuminati and they're working together to actually stop the incursions. But you do have Reed kind of tell Black Panther, you should take the peace treaty, take the peace offer so that your two nations will not go into war. But on top of that, you two can still work with us to find a way to stop the incursions. Now, at the end of their conversation, we actually see that Reed has been building a lot of bombs just in case for future incursions down the road. The problem is Reed has no idea if he has built enough bombs for all the incursions to come down the road. Because when it comes to the multiverse, there is an infinite number of worlds out there. And so Reed is still scared that he has not built enough bombs to help them stop the incursions. But we are actually going to wind down this story right here because this was just a one shot story as a way to give us update on what is going on with each character in the Marvel Universe that is part of the Illuminati. But either way, we actually do jump over to Wakanda where of course we do pick up with Shuri, T'Challa, and their council right now talking about what they should do when it comes to Wakanda fighting against Atlantis. Now remember, earlier T'Challa did tell Namor to send that peace offer over to Shuri, which she did receive, but right now she's asking her council what should she do? What should Wakanda do? Now of course, most members on this board, they're telling her, go to war. This man wiped out a huge chunk of Wakanda and right now more people have died over the last couple of days with small things happening between Wakanda and Atlantis. We need to finally wipe out Atlantis and also kill Namor. Now again, this is all of her council members. You do have T'Challa kind of butt in and say, maybe we should not. Maybe we should actually think about this more and try to fix our country first before we dive into a full out war between Atlantis and Wakanda. It is him trying to actually trick his sister to take the peace offer because him and Namor are working together as a way to save the earth. But of course, Shuri only listened to her counsel because again, Wakanda has lost so much over the last couple years. And so the last page we see Shuri say, Wakanda is going to war with Atlantis. And the book ends right there. Now, to begin today's video, we actually pick up with Avengers number 14. 
and we actually pick up in India. Now, with us picking up in India, the reason why, because India was one of the six spots that were hit with a genetic bomb. A genetic bomb was made by a character known as Ex Nihilo, who was trying to make the earth better, but on top of that, make the human race better as well. And so he sent down six bombs to complete that goal. And each bomb had a different goal or a different thing to do to help reach that goal. And so when it came to India's bomb, that bomb was supposed to be as a way to make sure the system works perfectly fine. And so anytime there is a problem with the system, then the India bomb was supposed to find a way to fix the symbol. And so we see a bunch of creatures popping out and these creatures find out that the system is broken and they're trying to fix the system that is broken. But of course, they're having a hard time fixing the, si the system. But then we jump over to Australia and the reason why, because Australia was also hit with a genetic bomb. Now that bomb was supposed to build on communication to make communication better for the earth. But when these creatures pop out and they try to send a message, it doesn't work. And so they begin the process of sending a message out into space to tell the person who's out there in space who is going to receive this message that the earth is terminal. It needs to be wiped out possibly. And that is very concerning. But then we jump over to S.H.I.E.L.D. headquarters, where we pick up with Steve Rogers and Bruce Banner. And this is where you actually have everything get even worse. Because you have Bruce tell Steve Rogers that every single time those creatures in Australia try to send out a signal into space, they are causing problems across the entire planet. Navigation systems for planes are crashing. Nuclear facilities are going into meltdown. And so every single time those bugs in Australia are sending out that signal into space, they are causing havoc across the entire world. And Bruce Banner has no idea what in the world is going on. But he is wondering, can they call in Iron Man to help out? But unfortunately, Iron Man is up in space with Captain Marvel. And the reason why, because they're trying to deactivate a satellite because they're concerned that this satellite could actually fall out of orbit and fall back down to Earth, causing more problems for the Avengers down the road. And so you have Iron Man and Captain Marvel making sure that this satellite does not crash down anytime soon. But let's not forget what Bruce Banner said just a moment ago, that every single time those creatures in Australia send out that signal into space, they're making planes crash down. And so you have a lot of Avengers right now trying to save all the planes in the sky to make sure they land safely because there are a lot of innocent people on those planes. And so right now, the Avengers are really freaking out because they have no idea how in the world they can save the day right now. There's too many things going on all at once. And planes falling out of the sky is not the only problem. At the same time, across the world, you have multiple nuclear meltdowns happening. You have Black Widow, Hawkeye, Thor, and Hyperion check in with Bruce Banner to tell him that, hey, they were able to stop just one nuclear meltdown only because Captain Universe stepped in to actually fix the problem. But then you have Captain Universe say that she realized something. The signal that's being sent out from Australia is trying to reach somebody so that person can come here and reshape the Earth which is very, very important. Now, the Avengers have no idea that the signal is being sent out from Australia. And so Bruce Banner has to wait until the next signal is sent out so that they can pinpoint where all this mess is starting from so that the Avengers can go there and hopefully end everything. But here comes the big problem though. When the next signal is sent out into space, Different groups or different characters that we have met throughout Hickman's run on Avengers all hear that signal and they're wondering how in the world should they respond? Should they go? Should they stay? Or should they ignore that signal and continue their own work? But of course, the very last group we see are the creatures from India. 
They heard that signal and they knew they need to go towards the signal. And that is when a portal opens up and they walk through that portal hoping to go to where the signal is coming from. But thankfully, with that signal being sent out, Bruce Banner was able to tell the rest of the Avengers, y'all need to go to Australia. That is where everything is starting from. If we stop the mess there, hopefully everything will be fixed after that. And so you do have the Avengers get there. Except when the Avengers get there, they have to fight against two different kinds of creatures. The one from India and the ones from Australia are all there right now. And so the Avengers must work together to actually defeat both of these creatures that have arrived in Australia. But then you have Bruce Banner realize something that something is going on on AIM Island because he's picking up a lot of energy coming from that island. AIM is another evil organization known as Advanced Idea Mechanics. But let's not forget, AIM was the only group of people to find out that there was a seventh genetic bomb. And when they went to that site, they found some kind of pod and they took that pod back with them to their island. Except whatever was inside that pod is now awake because AIM found a way to wake up that beast inside that pod. And that beast is about to cause a lot of havoc down the road for the Avengers just in a minute. Now, when we jump into Avengers number 15, we actually see the Avengers are right now struggling to fight against Ex Nihilo's creations because every single time they kill one of them, of course, two more just pop right up. And so right now the Avengers are being overwhelmed by all of these different kinds of creatures. And let's not forget, the Avengers did bring in some heavy hitters like Thor and Hyperion. But of course, it still doesn't matter. The Avengers are being overrun by a lot of these creatures and they could possibly lose this battle very soon. Now back at the base of S.H.I.E.L.D. headquarters, you actually have Bruce Banner trying to figure out what kind of signal the bugs are sending out. Trying to figure out, are they sending out a distress signal or is this some kind of tracking system? But right now, Bruce Banner has almost every single S.H.I.E.L.D. agent that is assigned to him working on this project. They're trying to figure out what in the world is going on here. What are they trying to bring here to the Earth that could possibly reshape the Earth in the near future? But let's jump back over to AIM because remember, AIM was the only group that had known about the seventh genetic bomb that hit the Earth. And when that bomb hit, it left behind some kind of pod. And AIM took that pod back to their base, but apparently they woke up whatever was inside that pod. And when they woke up that monster, it began to wreak havoc across all of AIM Island. And of course, you do have some AIM soldiers walk into the lab to see what in the world is going on. But that creature is already gone. And that creature is actually heading towards the Avengers now. Because remember, those creatures in Australia are sending out a signal. And of course, that monster that AIM just woke up is being called by that signal. But then we see where that signal is going to, who the creatures are trying to reach, because we watch the signal cross the universe. And as it crosses the universe, it does reach an Aleph. Now, an Aleph was made by the builders. And let me remind you guys, the builders and the Aleph origin. So when it came to the universe, one of the first races was the Builders. And the Builders used to praise Captain Universe as a god. But then later on, they decided to go their own way. With them going their own way, they decided to reshape the universe in their image. Now, when they did that, they created the Alice, the robots to go across the universe to go to different planets. When those robots reach those planets, they decide if the race on those planets deserve to live or be destroyed. And if the Alice decide the race on those planets should be destroyed, 
they did let out a gardener as a way to reshape those worlds into the image of the builders. And so that is what the creatures are doing right now. They're sending a message out to Aleph and basically saying, hey, listen, the earth needs to be wiped out. It needs to be reshaped in the image of the builders. Now, back on Earth, the Avengers were able to finally defeat the creatures only because the big hitters began to actually do some real damage to the creatures. And so after a couple more pages, we actually see the Avengers being able to celebrate with the idea that they were able to defeat every single one of those creatures and they can finally rest. And hopefully that stops everything going on with the planet. Except you didn't have Captain Universe appear. And when she appears, she asks Manifold to come with her. And the reason why, because Manifold has the ability to teleport almost anywhere in the universe. But either way, she says that this is not over yet. The worst is yet to come. And she wants to show Manifold what could possibly be coming towards Earth down the road and so they both leave but then we pick up with abigail brand and sword now sword is an organization in marvel comics where they basically protect the earth from any kind of threat from space and their leader is abigail brand the girl with green hair but either way though you do have abigail tell us that they were able to stop five spaceships from going into earth except that is when one of her agents say Unfortunately, one ship did get past them and that ship is about to crash land on Earth at the moment. And that ship is actually full of scrolls. And of course, we know scrolls usually have a bad rep on Earth thanks to secret invasion. But then we pick up with Captain Universe and Manifold. And the reason why, because Captain Universe took Manifold away as a way to show him what could be coming to earth down the road and so they went to a random planet now when they get there to manifold everything seems okay nothing looks bad at all but that is when you have captain universe says no the end is about to begin and that is when they both look up into the sky to see a spaceship that's about to wipe out this entire planet. But back on Earth, you have Bruce Banner call us Steve Rogers because remember, the heroes think the day is saved. They were able to defeat the creatures we first saw in India and Australia and they think everything should be okay at the moment. But that is when you have Bruce say, no, something really powerful is coming your way. And of course, that powerful thing is what AIM had inside that pod back on their island. And that thing is heading towards Australia because it heard the signal and now it wants to go there and possibly it could wipe out the Avengers. But then we are reintroduced to two characters we have not seen in a long time. Nightmask and Starbrand. Now these two characters were very important for our white event video. A white event is basically when a planet is chosen in a universe because that planet is about to go through a huge change. But with that planet going through a huge change, somebody is chosen to be a star brand to basically lead that race in the correct direction as it go through the change. And the star brand was chosen on Earth because Earth was chosen because Earth was about to go through a huge change thanks to those genetic bombs. But either way though, Nightwalker is supposed to help the star brand help the people go in the right direction. But at the end of the white event, Starbrand and Nightmask were actually put in the Dyson Spear around the sun because Tony Stark and the rest of the Avengers were so scared of how powerful these two guys are, they had no idea what in the world to do with them. But they've been up there for a good period of time. And in that period of time, Starbrand powers have actually began to evolve and Nightmask can actually see it. And it's kind of like, yeah, Starbrand is just getting more powerful by the second, which could lead to more problems for the Avengers down the road. But getting back over to Captain Universe and Manifold, remember Captain Universe brought Manifold to this random planet 
as a way to show him so that he can tell the Avengers what is coming towards Earth down the road. Because at the end, they did see a random spaceship float above this random planet. And that spaceship is about to wipe everything out. But Captain Universe says she knows that spaceship is holding her children, her lost children. And that is when you have Captain Universe tell Manifold to go back to Earth to warn the Avengers what is about to come. Matter of fact, she even says, to protect a world, you must possess the power to destroy a world. Meaning that whatever is coming to Earth could literally wipe Earth out completely. Speaking of the Avengers, remember, they just got told by Bruce Banner that something powerful is heading their way. Of course, that powerful thing is that creature that AIM had under control for a short period of time. But that creature heard that signal and of course is trying to get to that signal. And so right now you have that creature actually arrive to Australia. And of course now the Avengers must get ready to fight against this creature and hopefully find a way to actually beat it. Speaking of Bruce Banner, we actually see him right now still on the helicarrier. But the problem is Bruce is under a lot of stress because with all of the problems the Avengers are facing at the moment, of course, it was too much for him. And that is the moment you have Bruce Banner turn into the Hulk right in the middle of the helicarrier. And so now they have another problem on their hands. But getting back over to the Avengers, we actually get two pages to show us how powerful this creature is. We don't see the Avengers badly beaten just yet. We can tell they only took a few punches here and there, but Thor, he got hit pretty hard, which means that this creature is honestly really powerful and the Avengers could possibly lose this battle against this creature right at this moment. But then we jump back one week ago and we pick up with Starbrand and Nightmask. Now remember, earlier we saw Nightmask tell Starbrand that his powers are evolving. Starbrand is getting more powerful by the second. But you do have Starbrand say that he realized the Dyson Spear is not powerful enough to actually hold him, which means Starbrand and Nightmask could leave their prison anytime they want to. But of course, they don't. And the reason why, because Nightmask says, until your powers are completely under control, we can't do anything at all. And so until you get your powers under control, we have to wait right here for the right moment. Now getting back over to the Avengers who are fighting against the creature that came from AIM Island. Like I said earlier, this thing is powerful. And of course, it's wrecking the Avengers all over the place. The Avengers don't even stand a chance, and they even have some of their big hitters with them as well. But of course, it doesn't even matter for the Avengers. They don't have any chance here, and this creature is just throwing the Avengers around like they are nothing to him. So now the Avengers must find a different way to actually beat this thing, because if they can't stop this creature, then the question is, who can then? But going back over to AIM Island, they are actually still recovering from their beatdown from the creature that had just escaped. But on top of that, they are watching the footage of the Avengers getting their butt kicked by the creature, which of course makes AIM very happy. And so you have AIM begin to turn on the same machine they used to pull Hyperion from the White Void as a way to teleport the creature back here hoping to have something new under their control. At the end of the 16th issue, we actually see the Avengers have been defeated by the creature and now it seems things are about to get a whole lot worse for the Avengers and the rest of the world if they were unable to actually defeat the creature and now this creature could possibly wreak havoc across the world. Now we see that some time has passed by. We see AIM and one of their members, Superior, actually confront the creature in Australia. Now you have Superior tell the creature that she understands what was going on with the creatures and the signal they were sending out. At first, it seems like the creatures were trying to destroy the planet, but in reality, 
They were actually trying to recreate the earth in a better form. But that is the moment we actually see that Aim begins the process of actually capturing the creature to use him for later plans down the road. Now, if you are wondering how in the world they are going to be able to actually hold something this powerful, well, they put the creature into the white void where of course nothing exists, which means that this creature is just floating around with no way out and nowhere to go. But then we see Aang begin the process of taking samples of the Avengers for some strange reason. We have no idea why just yet, but apparently for a different project. That is when you have Manifold appear. When he looks around, of course, he sees what Aim is trying to do. So of course, he begins to use his powers to get rid of the Aim soldiers who are there at the moment. Since he has the ability to teleport, that is how he got rid of them. But then he goes on to teleport his friends away from the danger. Because remember, he has to tell them everything he had learned while being with Captain Universe, which of course is going to be the end of everything on Earth if the Avengers don't find a way to actually stop all of this from happening. Now you do have all of the Avengers meet back up at the headquarters including Bruce Banner as well because he's done being all Hulk out. But of course this is the moment you have Manifold tell the Avengers everything he learned from Captain Universe and right now something bigger is coming to Earth and when it does arrive will the Avengers be ready? So this is the moment you have Tony, Steve and Bruce all decide that they need to recruit one more person who can actually help them in protecting the earth. That one person who had actually caused a lot of problems in the first place. The man who is living on Mars and is changing it for the better. Of course, that person would be no other than Ex Nihilo himself. They are going to ask him to join the Avengers to help protect the earth from whatever danger is on its way. We actually see the Avengers going to Mars, and when they do, of course, they ask Ex Nihilo and Abyss to join the Avengers because they need all the help they can get at this point. But you actually have Ex Nihilo take a moment to think about it like he is going to say no to the idea. But of course, he is down to help, so he leads with the Avengers to get ready to battle against whatever could be coming their way. So you had the Avengers go to the Dyson Spear, and the reason why is because remember, Starbrand and Nightmask were being held here because it is the only place the Avengers thought could hold them. But when the Avengers arrive to talk to Starbrand and Nightmask, they are not there to battle the two characters, instead, it is the Avengers asking for their help. Because again, they need all of the help they can get for whatever is coming down the road. With the Starbrand on their side, they might actually stand a chance against whatever could be coming their way down the road. Only time will tell though. And this is where we are going to end today's comic book video. So please hit that like button down below and subscribe. Also, if you have any suggestions on books I should read, well, please let me know in the comments below because you never know, your suggestion could be a future video down the road. But I do hope you enjoy today's comic book video.